So we have seen in our previous video how to add the edited chairs to an Angular project. In this video, we are going to explore the additional options that is adding the built-in plugins available inside the edited chairs. If you open the editorjs.io website and notice this plugins link on the top of the header bar, open it up and you will be taken up to the editor chairs GitHub repository wherein you will see a list of plugins which are quite useful. To begin with, we are going to first explore two plugins, the header as well as a table plugin. Let me quickly jump to the Visual Studio code and I will show you the package.json. You will see that there are two extra packages that I have installed. This is an addition to the earlier project that we have seen. If you have not seen that video, I will recommend you to go through that video first and then move ahead with this. So we have this header and the table plugin added to our project. Let me just go back to the uh, the basic component file that we have. This is the existing code that we have seen earlier. I'll again switch back to the Chrome and let's open up a sample page from the header repository. So this is the welcome page for the header plugin that we have inside the editor chairs. And it comes with a default set of instructions. The very first step I already executed uh, it is talking about installing the dependency. The second thing that we require is to actually configure this plugin inside the editor chairs. So what it says is that we need to add an additional attribute called as tools. And inside that, we need to provide a key along with a reference of the class. So this header class is nothing but the one which we imported earlier. I'll go back to the Visual Studio code and start making changes to the code. So you can see that we already have this editor chairs constructor inside that. If I press a control space bar, you will see there are a lot of options that comes up. And then there is an attribute called as tools. This is a place wherein we can add our header plugin first. So I'll give a key as header. And then I will add the additional options. Now there is also a shortcut wherein you can completely ignore these curly brackets and just simply specify the header class. Let's see whether we have it. We haven't imported that. It is imported. So import header from at the rate editor chairs slash header. So I can just specify reference of this class over here. Or if I want to customize the additional options of this header plugin as well, then in that case, it is recommended to use this curly brackets followed by an attribute called as class. And inside this, we can provide a reference of header. Then we need to indicate if there are any additional configurations that needs to be overridden. For example, if I want to add an inline toolbar, I can also specify that. But before moving on to that, let me just quickly save this code and see what happens on our screen. So our web page is refresh. We can see that the editor is available. Now if I click over here, you will see that the second option called as heading is available. In earlier video, if you have noticed, there was only an option to add a text, which is a default plugin. Now this time, if I change it to heading, and if I start typing a text, the appearance of a text is a little bit different. In the next block, it will actually start with the default paragraph plugin. So I'll say this plugin base interface is nice. Let me select the heading block and you'll see there are no options that are getting displayed. If I go to the normal text space or block that we have, and if I start selecting a text, you will see this inline toolbar is coming up. Now, if you want to add this inline toolbar to this heading, this is where the additional configuration comes into picture. So I can say that inline toolbar and I can specify the least of options that I need over here. So we will add bold as well as italic as an option. Let me just save that. And this time if I'll just go over here, first I will add the heading block. Let me type some text over here. Some dummy text. Let's quickly test the change. If I'll select this introduction, you can see that there are two options available, bold and italic. Now I can change the appearance of the text that we have. In addition to that, we also have an option to convert this heading block to some other plugin. So 
right now there is only a text plugin and that is why we are getting only one option in case if you install additional plugins that option will also be available over here so you can quickly change the heading option to text or text option to heading let me just show you that so now if i select the text you can see that all the formattings are getting removed if i select this introduction text again and change it to heading we are seeing that the heading comes back now let's go ahead and also add the second plugin that we have let me just quickly locate that the second plugin is table i will open it in a new tab again it has some basic set of instructions we have already done this now we want to use this particular table plugin so the default syntax is to just add a key followed by the name of the class now this table need to be imported note that this is a default import so I'm not putting it into a curly brackets and then I need to specify the module from which the import has to happen. Let me quickly save that. And this time if we go to our example, you can see that the very first block is available. Let me type some text. I will convert it to heading. And the second block that I'm going to add is the inverter table. So you will see that the third option is now, to, now available. I click that. And then there's a default table that gets added. I can see uh, title and description. These are two different columns. Dummy. Here goes my text. There are also additional options available. I can indicate whether my table has heading or not. So if I select the first option, you will see the appearance of the headings are getting changed. If I turn it off, Again, it is getting reverted back to the original styles. You also have an option above each column. So you can indicate whether you want to add a new column to the left or the, to the right, or you, can, you want to delete an existing column. You can also add a new column, third column. Let me quickly check whether the delete operation is working fine. I will select this delete column option. It is asking me for a confirmation. And the moment I click that, it is actually removing the column. So congratulations, you just learned how to add the plugins and customize few basic settings of those plugins inside Editor.js. In the next video, we will explore how to create your own plugin and add it to this editor. Till then, take care and build something.